God is in this house. The Lord is here. There's, um, I, I'm not going to say the word unusual. That That's not the proper term. But I'm going to say there's a presence here of God. There's a thickness here. You can almost swipe the fog of his presence. He's here today. You reach out. Let God minister to you. Traveling on the road of life. I gave you an assignment last Sunday morning. I hope you did it every day. If not, at least a couple times, maybe once. But I hope you did it. Looking at Psalm 119, we told you to look at verses 1 through 8 and read them every day. Several of you have decided to read them from different versions. Great. I, re I read this passage from three different versions this week. I may just pick some more up next week and read them from three more different versions to gain insight. I read, I read from King James, English Standard, and the message this week of that passage. Perhaps next week I'll do like the... Young's little translation or just whatever I feel like doing at the moment I read to do. Do three more different translations and do them like twice. We're going to look at this passage today. We're going to keep it on the screen because I'm going to talk directly to it. I hope everyone can see it from where you are. Um, again, we're changing things around. And I uh, hope you can see it from where you are. And I know Dave will have it on the screen for out there. I'm going to talk about a pilgrim whose heart is a flame. A pilgrim whose heart is a flame. When God captures a heart, the journey begins. It's at that point. At that moment, something occurs within a transition and a transformation is made. It all starts in verse 1. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk, lost it there, Dave, who walk after the ways of the Lord. Okay, we'll bring that back. Okay, all right. Okay. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. We noticed last week there's seven synonyms for the word in the first eight verses of this passage. And we'll talk about them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, not directly in order, but go through quickly the seven synonyms in this passage that I talked about last week and tell you biblically what they mean. And that will help you so when you, when you read it, you'll have an understanding because all the words sometimes look like they're the, the same thing. What's the difference between a commandment or a statue or a precept? They kind of look the same up there. I mean, what's the difference up there? Okay, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about that today. We're going to show you when you read these passages the difference. The first word we're going to begin is the word way. You see it right there, all right? Blessed are the undefiled in the way. The way is to tread or to track or to gain destination because of conduct. That's what the way means here. To gain, to find a destination because of conduct. Now, the journey begins, and it's more than just doing something. Christianity is more than just doing something. What Christianity will do will show you how to behave. Christianity will show you how to behave. That's part of the word way. Christianity will, will roll out in this particular passage 13 times in Psalm 119. The writer says the word way 13 times. Now, what, what's he talking about here is going forward in the way of the Lord. 
Never be stagnant in your spiritual experience. Some folks just get to a spiritual place and they camp out there the rest of their days. Never do that. Always follow the way. If you were, if you were going to a destination this afternoon as you left this building and you said, I need to go somewhere, a destination, and you walked out in the parking lot and sat in your car and started the car and said, okay, and you, you just got to the end of the parking lot by the stop sign here in the corner, and you stopped, and you never went any further, you would never reach your destination. Same thing spiritually. Never get to a place in your spiritual life where you just camp out, where you just say, okay, I've arrived, here I am, I got it, and never getting to God's destination in your life. And that's what the psalm said. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk, notice, in the law of the Lord. You, you drive, you walk. Okay, let's look at verse 2 because I want to do these very quickly. The second thing I want you to do is look at the word testimonies. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. 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 Now, testimonies comes from a great word, means to witness, to see, to, to be again. 23 times in this psalm, the word testimony is used. Now, what he's talking about here is this. He's not talking about you. He's talking about God's power. <clears throat> he's not talking about you standing up and witnessing something and just saying it even though it's true. See, he's, he's saying this is that God works to testify to God's power, his faithfulness, his righteousness, his mission, his personality, and his resurrection. That's what God is doing all the time. God is testifying to his power. We felt his presence here today, still do. God testifies to his faithfulness. God will testify to his righteousness. He'll testify to his mission. He will testify to God's personality. God has a personality, and he'll testify to his resurrection. Now, what you're doing here is that you're walking, you're walking. Notice what happened here. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. We'll talk about law in a minute. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies. You are walking on a daily basis as you live your life out as it rolls out before you. You're walking and testifying to his power, his faithfulness, his righteousness, his mission, his personality, and his resurrection. That, that's what you're doing. You're walking in that resurrection power. You're walking in the power of God. You're walking in the mission of God. You're walking in the faithfulness of God. You're walking in his righteousness. So you're walking in. You're in the way, walking in his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. We talked about that this morning in the song. That's more of God, more of God, sin, more of God, more of God. That's seeking. That's seeking. Now let's drop down to verse 4. Okay? Oh, we've got precepts. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. 21 times in this psalm, he used the word precepts. Precepts. I can't tell you all the verses because if I said 1, 7, 8, 14, 12, 15, 122, you wouldn't catch them anyway, okay? So, so just if you want to find out, just look in the concordance and just follow the, the chain. Now, precept means to visit, to oversee, to mandate of God. To vision, oversee the mandate of God. And even though they sound like they're together, these these areas that actually have their own separate definition. Now, if his precepts are fulfilled, it means that his promises are enjoyed. I'm going to say that again. If his precepts are fulfilled, his promises are enjoyed. Because the word precept means to oversee. It means to visit. So a person that's walking in his precepts. For thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. If you keep the, the overseeing of the mandates of God and you walk in them, 
and they are followed, your promises in our lives, God will be enjoyed. See, we'll enjoy the promises of God. See, because remember, all this is dealing with what? How to live a blessed life, verse 1. It's, it's that precept. I want to live a blessed life. He's telling you in this verse, in these passages, eight, eight verses of how to be blessed. How many wants to be blessed? I'm a candidate for blessing. Then let's follow the prescription. I mean, we go to doctors. We pay all that money. <laughs> well, we're not going there, Ray. Just stay out of children's church, okay, back there. All right, control yourself. Amen? Now, now listen. We pay all that money. And then he writes us a prescription to help us. What it, what it, it could be anything. And he thinks, okay, you need this type medication. Okay, fine. And he writes a prescription to help our situation. And he says, take the pills, take the, the cream, drink this, and you'll get better. So you go, they call in for your local pharmacy. You go pick it up, and you put it on a shelf and never use it. One time when Jackie was very young, just a baby, went to a doctor, and his doctor was a, an Oriental. He, he kind of laughed with that Oriental way. <laughs> and I got to know him, and I, I talked to him one day. I said, hey, I said, tell me about this situation. Here's what he says. He, and he, in the Oriental way, and I can't produce it, uh, I know there are Koreans and our Chinese out there, and Grace Point can, but I can't. And he said, you know what the problem is tonight? I said, no, doctor, what the problem is tonight? He said, you know how, he says, I prescribe medication, and they don't use it. Then he says, and know what? I said, what? He said, my office is full of people that has to come back to see me. I said, why do you have to come back to see you, doctor? And he said, because they didn't take the medication. He said, so when I prescribe medication for your daughter, you'll be sure to give it to her so you won't come back. I said, deal. Precepts. Precepts. The precepts are fulfilled means that the promises are enjoyed. That's a prescription from God himself. Let's look at the next one and try to hold this. Verse 6. It's the word commandments. Thou sh then I shall not be ashamed when I respect unto all thy commandments. Commandments. 22 times in this passage in this great psalm. I love this psalm. I'm telling you. I, I, I'm, I'm marking my Bible up in Psalm 119, it, 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 it's a, it, I'm telling you, I'm finding so many things in it. I'm just, I'm just finding so many things in Psalm 119 that, that uh, I, just, I just can't stand it. I really do. I, the more I look, the more I find, the more I find, the more I mark, and the more I mark, the more marked up my Bible becomes. Um, uh, it's incredible what I'm finding here in Psalm 119. Um, let me try to keep my glasses on the podium. I just I want to show you this. This is so fantastic. I don't show them because I I'm smarter than you, or no more than you. I'm not I'm not doing that. Hold it here. Let me hold it. I mean I mean it starts it starts. See I rather I rather I rather get this in your heart than sweat. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay. It starts right here. And and that's what it started. And then it's already here. All the yellow when I'm picking up from this passage, you know. And time we're done, I don't think there will be any anything but colors in here because I use different colors for different things. There's so much power in Psalm 119 because people don't preach from it because it's 176 verses okay and I understand that I understand that all right 
commandments. God never gives commands. I want you to put this down in your life. God never gives commands without the power to carry them out. Ever. God will not command you to do something and then not enable you to get it done. A lot of people say, well, God commands me and I can't do it. No, that's not true. All his commandments are enabling. They, you have the ability. If God commands you to do certain things in your life, in my life, in our lives, in the word of God, if he commands something, then he will give you and me and us the ability to carry that commandment out. To carry it out. I remember one time in one church we were, a lady couldn't play a piano at all. She had no music ability. She was tone deaf. She had no ability. And one day in the service, God said, get up there and play the piano. And she said, I can't play the radio. And so she got up and she had guts spiritually. During the service, she walked to the platform. She sat down behind the piano. She took a deep breath and she played one of the most beautiful songs you ever heard in your life. And we went, wow, we didn't know she could play. Well, she couldn't. And so after she played, tears came down her eyes. So we said, what happened to you? Stuck the microphone in her face. And to, uh, to, uh, I got it back. He told me to, to play the piano. And she said, I've never played the piano in my life. And from that day forward, guess what? She played the piano. What I'm saying to you, listen to me, church. Listen to me. God will never give you a commandment. No matter how silly it seems, no matter how out of character it may be in your life, that you're unable to perform at that moment ever. God will never embarrass you. I'll tell you why. Those on Tuesday night know that there's a scripture in Deuteronomy that says you do not embarrass people publicly. And the scribes and Pharisees did that with Jesus over and over. They tried to embarrass him in a public setting, and that's against the, against the law of God. God will never break his law. So what does that mean? It simply means that if God gives you a commandment, at that moment you have the resources to obey. And that brings us. You see what I'm doing before you say if the Spirit of God, I am giving you the tools for power, victory, and blessing. Take him to heart, saith the Lord. Look at verse 1. It's, there was the law. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Law is, you know, people use it, law is like just all these rules. No, that's not what he's talking about. You know, all these, these heavy-handed, gavel-type rules. The word law there is a very interesting word. It means to protect, per, protect an arrow. It, it mean, it's like putting an arrow in a bow and shooting it. It, it, it's taking a, a bow and arrow and shooting it. But there's an, another definition sitting right here. It means water from a rock. Oh, yeah. Water from a rock. Here's what God says. Blessed are undefiled in the way who walk in the water of the rock of the Lord. Water. Spiritual water. Life-giving water. Those that are blessed walk in the <laughs> life-giving water from God. Now, it also means point to teach. That's what I'm doing to you now. I'm teaching you. I'm sending the arrow forth, and I'm telling you what that word means. It's used 25 times in, the, in this passage in Psalm 119. 25 times it says, take, take the arrow and shoot it. I, I think we spent a whole lot of weeks dealing with arrows being shot a few months ago. Remember? Huh? About the arrows being shot? Huh? I think you do. 
Now, what are you talking about here? It's saying that God's saying, if you follow his precepts and all the things, we'll put it together, and you walk in the way that, that when Israel needed life-giving physical water, that, that they needed it for, for the, the thousands and thousands they had, millions of the, of the actual people and the animals, etc., and there was no water in the desert and they were thirsty, God brought forth water from the rock and they were able to drink. Here's what it says. Here's what it says. You can be blessed as you follow the Lord because he has the ability to bring water from the rock in your life and bring blessing from unexpected sources. Unexpected sources. His law is binding on our conscience. His law is binding. His law is binding and it's to be recognized and observed. You just follow God. Look at verse 7. Here's number 5. I'll praise thee with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. The word is judgments. Everybody goes, oh, gee, that's bad. No, oh, gee, that's good. Oh, that's bad. The judgment of God. You know, lightning, thunder. You know, you know, boom, bang, harm. <laughs> see, see. Here's what that word means. It means to turn things that were upside down, right side up. Doesn't mean that thunder and that lightning and God's going to get you for that and crush you like a, a roach on a, a counter. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Here's what it says. Look at this. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when I have learned thy righteous judgments. When I see you turn things right side up in my life. When I see you turn things that were backwards, forwards. When I seen things in my life that was going in the wrong direction, now goes in the right direction. 23 times it's used. It's also the word in somewhere in there means mean ordain. I just can't give you every place of Scripture. So look it up for yourself. See, see, you just say, God, I accept your righteous judgments. I accept, and I'm not going to question what you do. Now, in the context of what we're saying, because we, we sometimes we ask God about some things, we're, we're not doing that in this passage for blessing. We simply says, okay, God, I'm going along, and you're going to turn things around for me, and I'm not going to argue when you do. Amen. I'm going to say, God, I argue with you turning around in my life. All right? That's judgment. Here's the next one, righteousness. That's verse 7. That's used 12 times. All right? You saw the word righteousness or righteous or justice. See, here's what God says. God says, I have a straight ruler. My ruler is true, and my ruler is straight. And he says, I judge, God speaking, my all other my actions by the ruler of my righteousness. So God will do things by his righteousness. He just lays the line down. Or we would say, put his foot down, basically. But here's what happens. When he does... When he does, when he does, it leads to blessing in your life. Instead of saying, okay, let me go over here, God. God says, no, no. If you go in that straight line there, I'll bless you in a very real way. Folks, I'm telling you, God wants to do something fresh within you. Here's the next one. The next one is statue. That's in verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed by to keep thy statutes. What statutes? Well, statutes used 22 times. 22 times it's used in, in this passage 119. See, here's what statue means. It means revelation. God will begin to reveal things to you. Then he says, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to engrave this revelation with a, a marvelous thing. 
I'm going to put an indelible pen to it, one that cannot be changed. I'm going to engrave it in your life. One place the Bible says that we are grave, engraven in the palms of Jesus' hands, indelibly there, forever known. You look that scripture up if you please. Not this minute. What happens? Here's what happens. When God has engraven his presence and words in our heart, and he engraves indelibly in our heart, It's like clear type. Okay, look at all the words here. Okay? They're pretty clear. They're not distorted. I mean, you can see them. They're clear. What God's saying is, I'm going to take my statutes, God speaking, and I'm going to engrave them into your spirit that's going to be very, very clear. A lot of times people say this, well, I don't know what God's saying, or I don't know where God wants you to do, and I don't know what God wants you to have, or I don't know what God, how God wants you to live, and they say that. But God says if you're doing and working and being what I want you to be on the way, verse 1, then I will give you clear direction. There'll be no fuzziness. Direction. I don't know about you, but I just told you some wonderful things. Now, there's something common about all these words. There's something common about every one of these words. Every one of these words. There's something common. You'll read that throughout all the places that the Scripture refers them to in Psalm 119. There's something very common, very common. It's the word thy. It's the word thy. Just glance at the, the, the screen. It's the word thy. Something in common. It's the word thy. Thy law. Thy word. Thy testimonies. Thy judgment. Thy commandments. Thy precepts. Thy statutes. Thy righteousness. Something very common. Notice, notice right here at the bottom, see the word thy? You can just go up and pick them out as you go. You know, thy statutes, thy precepts in verse 3. You go all the way up, all the way up. His testimonies, that's thy. Who walk in the law of the Lord, thy law, thy law. I'll keep thy statutes, O Lord, thy righteous judgments. Notice the term thy there. It's very common. And of all the precepts, in Psalm 119, all 176 verses, the commonality is the word thy, 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 thy. Hear me, hear me. A blessed pilgrim is a flame with the things of God. A blessed pilgrim is a flame with the things of God. So important is that fact that when times of discouragement and despondency and the darkest hour, and the toughest times, and the anguish that all of us face from time to time, that, that all of the problems we face on a daily basis, all the problems that confront us on an on a hourly basis perhaps, all the frustrations, everything that's out there, and anything you can name. See, here's what, here's what happens. When you understand the word thy and connect it to all those seven words, here's what occurs. You can say, I can go on because I have thy law. I have thy way. I have thy judgments. I have thy righteousness. I have thy statute. I have thy commandments. God, I can make it. Hallelujah. And he says that in Psalm 92. Oh, check that. Verse 92, 143, and verse 72. That's what he's saying. No matter what, you can make it. 
he's not going to perish. This pilgrim that we're looking at his words says, I'm not going to perish. I, I, I'm not going to perish. Because you know why? Because the Lord commandments are my delight. And he actually says that. My, my, my commandments make me happy. And verse 32 tells us his heart is full. He just, he's just bubbling over. He's just running over. I mean, he's, he's, he's walking in, in his shoes, and the shoes are squeaking because he's overflowing with the oil of God. And, and God floods his spirit, just like happening here this morning. God just floods your spirit. Floods it, floods it, floods it. Norman's sitting back there. It's so fantastic. I, I'm watching Norman back there, and I'm getting blessed because Norman's getting blessed. Amen. That touched my life. Just to see him staring at me and give me that smile every so often. He's looking straight at me right now. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying, God will flood you. Hallelujah. And the presence of God will take over. Would you just praise him right now? Lord, I pray. We know as we walk in along that he is always right. Righteous means right. He's always right. We mess up from time to time. He never. He's always right. We're always right. And he does not tolerate wrong, whether it's politically correct or not. God does not tolerate wrong. If it's wrong, it's wrong. Psalm 120, verse 128 will tell you that. If it's wrong, it's wrong. God does not walk in false ways. If it's sin in this book, then it's sin in this book. It's politically correct or not, it's sin in this book. So as you walk, The psalmist, <laughs> I could have followed him around a few days, whoever wrote this. He's always boiling hot, spiritually. He doesn't cool off. The entire 176 verses, he's blazing with the presence of God. I mean, he's burning up. Because God's word is sweet to him. Verse 103. Sweet. That's, this is sweet to him. This is honey to his spirit. He's totally in love with Jesus. Now we know Psalm 9, 119 deals with God, Jehovah in the Jewish context. But, but he's totally in love with Jesus. A person that's a Psalm 119 person is totally in love with Jesus. And here's what he does. He joins up with other pilgrims as well. That's verse 63. He, he just he says, come and join. 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 Join me in, in the direction. He's a team player. He's a team player. He just doesn't want he just doesn't want to be blessed all by himself. He wants all of you to be blessed too. So he's a team player. He's rooting for you. Go, Linda, go, 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 Linda. Go, Michelle, go, Michelle, go, Tom, go, Ruby, go, Jessica, go, Dave, go, 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 Ray. Amen. Go, 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 Chris, go, Mark. Go, everybody. Everybody you see. Go, go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's be a team player. Let's all be blessed together. Let's get, let's do great things for God. 
as a unit. That's what he's doing. Go, Norm. Amen. You know, just get, just go, 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 go. He, he, he's a team player. And here's what happens. The spirit burns within him, and the fire of God is consuming him. You can just read, you can read the passages. You see it if you read it with spiritual eyes. He's being consumed with the power of God. It's just, it's just flowing through him. And, and his anointing, the anointing of God is following him everywhere. This is not for pastors or preachers or guys that stand here. This is for all of you. Man, he's just anointed. He, he's just anointed. He's anointed. Follow me because I'm anointed. That's what he's saying, that whole psalm. <laughs> he's saying that the blessings of God is going to chase after you. That's what he's saying. That, that's these first eight verses. The blessing of God will run after you. I mean, you'll turn around, the blessing of God will be right behind you. You'll take 115 steps, and at the 114 step, the blessing will be right there. You, you, you'll, you'll be blessed by God in, in ways that you don't even know yet. You have no idea. You, you don't understand yet because you haven't experienced it yet. And, and the blessings will chase you. That's the psalm. The blessings will become to you. Now, our cry should be like his cry was, God, enlarge our hearts for the capacity. Well, what Keith says about, about increase our capacity for the blessings of God. Yeah, what Keith says. And he's doing better, by the way. Amen. And he's going to be okay. What are you saying? I'm saying, follow. I don't I'm following. How does that happen? The word of God is not there simply because God had nothing to do one day. I mean, What do you think I gave you your assignment last week? Because I think you have nothing to do in life? Of course not. Because you prepare your hearts. You start preparing your heart. And your heart will get on fire for God right here. And when your heart gets on fire, you know what comes next? A pilgrim whose mind is enlightened. He tells us, he's going to tell us about that subject in these passages. A pilgrim whose mind is enlightened. You just get understanding. But we're going to talk about that next time. You just, you just get understanding. You have an understanding. You have no dull moments. You never have a dull moment, a dull moment. You just operate in understanding all the time. Just understanding. Just flow in understanding. You just operate in understanding. A pilgrim whose mind is enlightened. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Because here's what happens. Blessings will come to us, but our mind is so dull that we don't see them. And they pass us by. Blessings will be right there. And they'll just walk past us. Remember verse 1, the way? Blessings will be right in front of us. And God will, will raise something up. And the blessing will look right at us. And we don't, we don't have the understanding. And the blessing will pass us by. Then we'll say to God, God, how come you haven't touched my life? And he already has. You just haven't grabbed it. Because you don't see it yet.
Maria hahaika na hahakeshako aya kasarabani ikia sato manahi kara. On your list, then saith the Lord, Lord God, I, parentheses, God, I am. <laughs> More parentheses, I hope they are. For I'm telling you, saith the Spirit, the hows and the whys and the wheres and therefores of how I function. And you've been wondering for a long time how I work. Now I'm telling you, saith the Spirit of God, just pay attention. Obey what I say. Do what I ask. <laughs> and be blessed in the way that you go, saith the Lord. Then we're going to talk about a pilgrim whose will is fixed. His will is solid. Then we're going to talk about a pilgrim whose lips are opened. And then we're going to talk about a pilgrim whose feet are steady. Oh, and that oh, and Psalm 119, it, 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 it's just embedded in there. But to have all that happen, you got to get on board between verse 1 and verse 8. That has to become part of you. That has to become part. It has to nestle itself and find its way in your spirit. It's got to break through. Because all of us, I'll, I'll say this again, I want to prepare your hearts. All of us have blessings which is right in the, the face and we miss them. I know I have. So have you. Blessings are just standing right there. And here's what we do. I'm going to challenge you as you read verse 1 through 8 every day this week. That when we talk about whose mind is enlightened, that you'll be prepared for that. Here's what we usually say, something like this. If it be God's will. Well, if God sent the blessing, it is his will, duh. Hmm? Someone calls me up this afternoon and says, hey, Ron, hey, uh, I got you two airline tickets somewhere. I'll, I'm not going to say, well, um, Hold it. Let me pray about it. I'm going to say, when can I pick them up? Huh? Because some things are just God's will. we got to finance Tonga. That's children. $50,000 in next year. If a corporation calls me up and says, uh, Mr. Zimmer, Reverend, I said, yes. This is Corporation XYZ. And we want to give you the $50,000 for the children of Tonga. I'm not going to say, well, sir, uh, corporate, uh, you know, CEO of corporation, let me pray about it. I'm going to say, where can I pick up the check? Here's the account. Huh? You see? You see? It's your will. Because I'm walking in the way, and so are you. See how that works? You see how that works? And I'm not talking about just money here. Money, money you can talk about because everybody knows about it. I'm talking about spiritual blessings. I'm talking about healing. 
I'm talking about strength. I'm talking about every particular category you can imagine that the blessings will come to us and we miss it. Because not in tune. I'm not just talking about money. That's not me and you know that. I'm not a, that type. You know what I'm saying. close with this. We're going to read this. A friend of mine it sounds trivial. It sounds, you know, trite. A friend of mine, uh, pastor, uh, had a truck and all four tires of his truck, w w they just went bad. I mean, they, they do that. How many knows that your tires were off from time to time? About every 50 thou. And he didn't have the money. So he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the tire place. This pastor, he pastor, I'll tell you where he is. It's Larry Bunyan He pastors uh, going to Fort Meade called New Beginnings Church right before you get to Fowler's Corners on the left. That's where he pastors. Go ask Larry. He's a friend of mine. And Larry s said, so he went to the tire dealer and he says, listen, the tire dealer says, Every tire on this truck is bad, and you're running on dangerous territory. If you drive down and you get a blowout, you're going to wreck this vehicle and maybe hurt others. And the cords were coming through. So Larry says, what do I do? I said, I know what I'll do. He said, can I put two on today and come back a month later and, and put two more on? I says, yeah, maybe we can put them on the front here so you have steering. Larry's cell phone rings, talking to the man. Larry says, excuse me, picks it up. He turns, and he says, so-and-so and so-and-so, and he turns back to the man, and he says, no, let's put all four on. So the man puts all four on. Larry didn't have a dime for four tires. He was scraping for the two. He probably couldn't even buy one. And he sits down in the waiting room of the tire shop, and he goes, oh, God. A truck comes out of nowhere. Jumps, a man jumps out of the car, runs over, runs up to the counter of that tire place and says, is that Pastor Larry? Yes. He said, how much is his bill? He said, it's going to be so-and-so. It's almost a 1000 bucks." And the guy looks around, and he was at Larry was over there, didn't pay any attention. The guy says, here, his bill, and hands him the check, jumps in his truck and drives away. Tires are on. Larry's sitting there going, oh, my, oh my, how are we going to do this? He gets up, he walks over to the man, and he says, well, what's the bill, and how can I work it out? And the man said, sir, there's no bill. He said, but this is, this is $1,000, and these tires are expensive, and, and the wheels and the balancing and all this other stuff. He goes, oh. He said, did you see a truck come up here? He said, no, nah, I really He said, well, that man just paid 100% of your bill. Here's your, here's your receipt. Here's your stuff. God bless you. That's what God does. Let's do it together. Stand to your feet. Let's read this together. Make sure wherever you are, you can see the screen. I'll move this out of the way to make sure there's no pedants and hindrance. We'll start together. I'll say the word blessed, and we'll just read it all the way through. Put into your heart, church, okay? God is trying to tell you that today. You ready? One, two, three. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Verse 2. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. Verse 3. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his way. Verse 4. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. 6. Then shall not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. Seven, 
I will praise thee with uprightness of heart when, when I shall have learned thy righteous judgments. And lastly, verse 8, I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Put that in your heart this week, beloved. Put in your spirit. Every day. Every day. How long did it take us to read that? Two minutes? A minute and a half? If you say I'm busy, then you're too busy. Find a place. If you only read one verse at a time, and only have time for one verse, and read one verse at a time, and then all eight during the day, but try to put it together and read it every day. And if you miss a day, you know, you're not going to be punished for it. But just go ahead and be diligent. Here's what, look what it says here. See the word? Let me find it here. The word was diligence. See right here? Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Be diligent. Be diligent. Heavenly Father, as we close this service today, Father, help us to be diligent in this. God, help us to walk in your ways. Help us to walk in your precepts and your statutes and your commandments and your judgments that are righteous, oh God. Help us, God, to operate under your testimony and understand the law, oh God. Help this church, Grace Point, in this room watching on the line by TV across into India, oh God. Wherever this service goes, that they will live victorious lives, that they will have victory in their hearts. Prepare their hearts for the enlightening of mind this week and the understanding and everything else this passage talks about. And we'll give you glory and give you honor. And Lord, we're going to hear some testimony. There's going to be some witnesses of your greatness and testimonies of your power and faithfulness in the lives of Grace Point. We're going to hear about it in Jesus' name. Take a moment and now praise him and give him thanks. Lord, we praise you and we give you thanks right now. Lord, I thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you, Lord, how you're working. I thank you, Lord, how you're functioning in our lives. In Jesus' name. Have a great week and be blessed by the Lord. Amen. Yes, thank you. Amen. One back.